Hello, time to put your pants on, ladies and gentlemen, and non-binary folk, or not, because it is time for So What Now. This is the one and only quarantine show to get your creative juices flowing as our world is slowly but surely falling apart. That Chun-Li looking excessive attention seeking know-it-all is Roxy Shi over there. You know what? It is the last week of Asian Pacific American Heritage Month, and I just want to feel my oats in terms of like feeling my heritage and my roots, that. you know? I respect it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And if you guys are wondering who that guy is, that is the handsome younger version of Tony Leung, Mr. Anthony Whoa. Ma. Whoa. Yes. That was a little complimentary today. I know. Thank nicer. you for calling me excessive and attention seeking. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of nice. But what's, you know what? What's you going were, on here, Rox? But you were nice to me last week. I mean, you called me a blue haired bombshell, so. Oh, well, you are. So. Ew, uh -huh. Stop. Uh -huh. Ew gross. Okay. What is this? I don't know. You're yeah, okay, Gia. It's I'm feeling nice today. Okay, so okay, okay, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the compliment. You're hmm. welcome. So okay, I want to thank you all for tuning in to our very not very fourth. <laughs> I want to thank you all for tuning in to our fourth episode of So What Now. And to be quite honest, we really actually never thought we would make it this far. Yeah, we thought that we would make it into like the third episode, right? <laughs> and that's it. Yeah. A hundred percent. But we keep getting incredible guests and uh, we're so, th we're almost at a thousand followers and likes like, what the fuck is life? Like seriously, Crazy. are we like famous? I think we're it's famous. more than my own personal page. I, no, I seriously. It. Nobody cares that much about us. Okay. Oh. But um, <laughs> we keep getting incredible guests and we're so excited to introduce to you somebody today who, in my humble opinion, is one of the most mm. interesting men in the world. Dos Equis, if you're watching, we would love for you to sponsor us. Thank uh -huh. you. But you may know him as an actor in Bosch, Bosch, it's Bosch. It's Borsch, I think. Borsch, Borsch. like the Russian suit, <laughs> Bosch, Marco mm -hmm. Polo, and mm -hmm. in the most recent Alita Battle Angel. But this man is also like a very gifted sketch artist and yes. has also trained in Chinese opera. And he's a martial artist, right? Yeah, it's pretty crazy. <laughs> He's all around everything. Oh my god. Okay, so oh my god. we are very, very excited to introduce to you Lanner. Together, Lanner! Thank you. That is the warmest welcome. I don't think anything's going to ever top that. You're welcome. Hi, Hi, Leonard. How are you? Good. How are you guys? Oh, man. We're very so good. Excited very excited Leonard. to have you, man. So, um, so Leonard's going to be teaching us a few ways of how he unblocks his creativity later in this show. But before we get to that, let's see a snippet of some of the amazing things that he has done over the, like, all these years. Okay? Hit it, Jack. <laughs> You've been bullying Jingham since we were babies. He was pretty, like a girl. You were jealous. I never got jealous. Not of anyone but you. You'll get your revenge. You want back at the White Tigers? Yes, Nalo. And obey me. You can see it's your dumbass friend dressed up. Is that a Falcor car? <laughs> yeah, it is. We made it ourselves. We did. We're thinking of right. taking the photos and putting it on Pinterest. You guys like drag racing, right? Now we've been known to drift. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, rocks. You can you can stop googling eyeing him. Okay. Oh, sorry. Yeah. sorry. Again, he's a dad. <laughs> And oh, married. So I'm All sorry. Right. I'm sorry, Leonard. I, I hope that wasn't inappropriate. It's just that no, no quarantine worries. thirst is still like very real. So ah, just quench it. Really just quench it for yourself somehow. Okay. <laughs> so um, I want to get into our very first segment of today. We're all in uh, pretty difficult times at the moment, and there's bad news around every corner. So we thought it'd be best to start our show with a little bit of uh, positive news with a segment called 
news that makes us go, ah. ah. Bumper. Bumper. <laughs> oh. Okay, so Roxy and I will each present a topical feel-good news story to Leonard, and he will be the judge of which news story that touches his heart the most and makes him go, ah, the longest. Okay? Okay, okay so Leonard, this is a competition between me and Anthony. Anthony right. won one time, and so I won one time. He's and then so the last one, we didn't have any guests judging us, so you are going to be the tiebreaker, so no pressure. <laughs> I'm cuter. So you should totally pick mine if his stories, and thank you, ends up better than mine. <laughs> okay, so, so who's going to go first? How are we going to decide? Staring contest! Staring contest? Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. All right, staring Leonard, contest. You're going to see. Really? Okay. okay, three, two, one. All right. I'm pretty good at this, just to tell you, Rox. <laughs> okay? I've, I've kept my eyes open for a while now because I have a kid at I'm home. And I, I'll, right? Both of you, I would have blinked like ten times. Ugh, oh, fuck. Rocky lost. Wait, can but I still anyway. go first? <laughs> go, 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 Rocks. I told you I'm good. So good. Okay, so I'm gonna go first. So this is my article. Mm -hmm. um, this one is Chinese immigrant who came to the U.S. with just a hundred dollars donates millions of PPE for frontline workers. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about this man. You know how we always have stories about like our, I don't know, our forefathers, our parents, or our grandparents who came to the United States with only like, like 500 or 50 bucks inside their pockets. Um, so this man, his name is C.C. Yin. He's 83 years old. He owns 30 McDonald's branches in Northern California, more than half of which are located in Solano City. He was a native of China who fled to Taiwan during World War II, and he immigrated to the U.S. in the 1960s with only $100 in his pocket. And what's crazy was that when he came to the U.S. and he wanted to buy, like, the store, like, uh, there was like a failing McDonald's outlet in Oakland and he wanted to buy it, but McDonald's deemed his unqualified due to his deficiency in English. And then the court ruled that the fast food giant cannot judge the immigrant as your standard. So now he feels like America has provided him with so many opportunities and that this is a time for him to give back. So he gave millions of surgical masks, hand sanitizers, face shields, goggles and gowns to frontline workers in the Bay Area and even Seattle and New York City. So for me, I just thought this was really beautiful because it's like he is, this is a true underdog story, but also someone who understands like how much he has and is the importance of giving back Definitely. during a time like this. That's, that's going to be tough to top, Anthony. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> All right. Bye, bye, bye. Bye. Okay, Gia. All right. Okay, D. Thank, thank you, CC Yin and uh, my Dong Lao for that. <laughs> <laughs> my Dong Lao, all the way. Okay, so my story is not set in America or is directly related to COVID in any kind of way. I'm going to throw a curveball right now. <gasps> but it does relate to something that Leonard and I have experienced. Okay? Oh, shit, you're coming it's from the a personal magic angle? of Cheater. childbirth. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So... In Toronto, um, uh, a woman went into labor right outside on the sidewalk in front of Humble River Hospital in Toronto. And there was one Janelin Buhong, a perioperative, perioperative, I'm sorry, perioperative <laughs> RN. So this is not her forte, delivering babies, okay? She sprang into action and helped these new parents uh, into the hospital. And she mentioned that when she already uh, saw the parents on the sidewalk, the umbilical cord was hanging out and everything, and the, the kid was already out, <laughs> okay? So she usually does transplant surgeries, but this was a super new experience for her. So she was just thinking to herself, what do I do now? So she checked on the baby, looked good, pink and crying, and she decided what, what to do next. And she kept hollering, and she couldn't wait for uh, any of the nurses from, say, the labor and delivery floor to come down. So she rushed the parents up on the way up there in the elevator. And so she was, she's still fairly new to this humble river, ho river hospital because uh, she donated and contributed her time during COVID. So she just, uh, so, so she had no idea exactly where the labor and delivery floor was. So she had to keep calm while keeping the parents calm in the elevator. And so 
in the heat of the moment, she, she, you know, she figured it out, got to the delivery floor and she could see that the father was freaking out. He was sweating. I'm sure, I'm sure you relate to this. Like I was during that time (laughs) and he didn't want to, she didn't want him to pass out on him. So she was just keeping both of the parents calm. But uh, thanks to Janelin, the situation worked out and the dad was able to even cut the umbilical cord. So the parents were so very thankful to Janelin that they wanted to name their new son after her. But she mentioned that, you know what? It's a boy. Give him a proper boy's name. Yeah. And if everyone is okay, I'm fine with that. So, uh, yeah, Janelin was, was great. Very That's amazing. Very positive, positive. Oh, my God. You guys are making me pick between those two fantastic <laughs> stories. Yeah. You have to awe the longest to one of those. So, so yeah. we have to count how many seconds your eyes so this is yeah. for mine for the underdog uh, entrepreneur backstory. giving backstory okay oh uh... <laughs> how many seconds is that whoa no! that was the longest all we've ever had that was the longest oh, really? all we've ever well, had. i don't know i don't know I'm, I'm going to fucking win, that. Anthony. Oh, no, you okay, okay. are going All right, down. all right, all right, all right. All right, all right. I don't even so, know how long. The, they're, they're so close. Uh, okay. I'm, they're so close? Okay, we have so, to really yeah, listen yeah. carefully. Okay. Okay. Okay, okay. And then this is for Janelyn Hong. Oh. Oh. I win. What was that? I win. I think I, I think you won. Okay, I think I you won. I win. Right. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay. Both amazing stories. <laughs> Both amazing stories. I win. I win. It was good. I it's fine. win. I no, win. but those two Oz happen to be the top two longest Oz we've ever really? had. Really? But show. isn't that the whole? Isn't that the whole point? Like, how long were other people going for? Like half of what you were going oh, really? for. Like, seriously, oh. Leonard, yeah. not only you are you so multi-talented, but you have great breath control. <laughs> That's very Thank good. you. It's Thank very you. Observant. That's from like yeah. holding everything in when I my, my toddler's running around and it's just me, my wife, and and the baby all day. So oh. much restraint. I can't wait to learn more about that. But we're going to get, get into there. that a little bit later. But so right now, so that was news that makes us go on. Thank you to everybody that's um you know frontline workers yeah. and everybody who's Both an essential are worker. Articles. Yeah, yeah, like everybody so. helping out during this time. I think it's important that we honor and recognize those people. I mean, obviously it's a fun competition, but any of these small stories win because yes. every yes, day- exactly. No losers in that situation. No losers, mm-hmm. yeah. This is just street cred for me. But up next, something <laughs> more fun and relevant to our star of the show today, Mr. Leonard Wu. We're gonna be uh, playing a game, not a game, but a little activity called Social, Social Media. Media. Sucker. Bumper. 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 <laughs> All right, Roxy and I have scoured Leonard's social media and found two pictures that he will have to elaborate on. Oh my god. I go first. Could be I go first. You, Leonard, go for it. Yeah. Go for it. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that hair. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So I went into your tagged photos on Instagram. <laughs> smart. And smart. I was that's where the about... that's where the incriminating photos are. Yeah. I mean, look at how you're wearing your knee pads down by your ankles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh jeez, I didn't notice that. It's hilarious. Yeah, and, and I also really love uh, like this caption is says, "I am Leonard Wu who got super swole." <laughs> yep. Uh... Please elaborate. So what's going on here? Yeah, <laughs> so, elaborate. Tell us uh, about no. this. So this is high school. Um, uh, volleyball was a big part of my life. That in Chinese opera. A, a lot of us, actually, these guys that I'm with, all, they all did volleyball and Chinese opera with me. And um, yeah, I grew up playing it. Uh, at one point, uh, was thinking about go, doing like, I don't know, second, third division college. Because I, I, I got pretty good towards the end of high school and uh yeah that i mean that my, my high school was my childhood was dictated literally it was like volleyball in chinese opera like if you ask the guys that are my closest friends that's how that's what that was our identities when we were growing up volleyball in chinese opera yeah that's how we spent our time um you know other people be playing outside with their friends or 
I don't know, experiencing their fear first, you know, beer or whatever at 16, 17, we were, we were doing Chinese opera and volleyball. <laughs> Leonard, I got to tell you, I would be so interested to see a TV show about that. Mm -hmm. I've gotten that more than once. And I'm like, um, I'm all for it. I'm just like, I don't, I develop TV, but I'm like, I got to find the end for that. If I, if I, you know, I got to find like what the angle would be, but uh, I'm not against the idea. I mean, like That's Chinese opera and volleyball. I mean, Chinese opera, like yeah. who? I don't know anybody that does yeah. Chinese opera. We were the only right. children's group, children focus groups in the nation. I think we still are. I mean, it's such a esoteric thing. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. Leonard, this was in DC, right? Or in D Yeah, DC, wow. yeah. So, so we would perform all around the greater metropolitan area, sometimes in New York, I think. Um, but yeah, there were, you know, I mean, times are different now, but back then it was like, arts were very supported you know, and, and so, you know, we were supported by, you know, DC, Maryland government a lot. And uh, it was great. Great way to grow up. You're an artist athlete. That's like so fucking cool. Oh, thanks. I never, it's, it's, it's funny. Like I, it, it's just all, it's just all different facets of kind of trying to express yourself. Right. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, whatever works. Wow. Thank you for sharing that volleyball Chinese opera. Yeah, That's like <laughs> definitely something I want to see. <laughs> Anthony, go. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so, Jack, bring up my photo. Mm. Michael oh. Paul. Sorry, guys. I oh, I think. Yes. Uh, look I look think at all the. I'm getting a little lag actors right here. And actresses. Oh, I can see you, Anthony. Yeah, you sure? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Roxy, you okay. Good. Yeah. Right now is right now is better. Okay. Okay. Cool. Sorry about that. That was just my side. Yeah. So, Leonard, please elaborate on this photo. <laughs> this was uh, uh, Marco Polo. This might have been towards the end of uh, filming for half a year. And we were in Malaysia. And mm -hmm. I mean, this cast is just amazing. They're, they're family yeah. to me. Uh, they've gone on to do amazing things. I mean, John Chen's John Chen, right? I, everybody mm -hmm. knows who John Chen is. Um, Remy is Spider Man. Ron's in Mulan, which is coming out. Uli is killing it in, you know, He's, he worked with Taika just recently, Taika Waititi. Wow. Claudia's killing in Korea. Benny, n nobody needs any explanation, Benny. <laughs> um, yeah, it was like, you know, it was an amazing uh, project to work on because it kind of happened before there was any kind of movement within the Asian community. Mm -hmm. um, it was a bit of an outlier. I don't think there was, I mean, what at that point in 2015, I think Fresh Off the Boat maybe had just started. And then, yeah, there's just like nothing. There was just no, there was no, uh, you know, barometer by which this could succeed or not. So uh, very grateful for the experience. Yeah, and, and how, oh, like, I'm sure just coming from an actor's point of view, you only get these opportunities, especially during that time before 2015, before Fresh right. Off the Boat, right. this uh, this project lands and you're, pro you're, you're part of such a huge, project for that that represents our community really well and it went on it, yeah I mean, Marco Polo went on to be something that really proved that we could have you know stories like this on Netflix on everything so awesome definitely that you're part of it. Yeah, yeah no I, I, I count my blessings it, it really um, it defines a lot of who I am today mm -hmm. um, just because of the people that I got to work with. I mean, acting on it was amazing, of course, but just the people that came out of it, the pedigree of the actors and actresses I got to work with. I mean, everybody's just killing it, you know? So um, I was so honored to be in such good company. Was it a grueling shoot? I mean, it looks like <laughs> yeah. it just because of the context of the show yeah, and like yeah. in Malaysia and like on yeah. location, like what was that like? Um, well, for, so if you, it was, it was grueling. Um, and the, the, the good thing that though was that even though it was exhausting because it was such a big ensemble, you did have time to rest. But when you did film or if you weren't filming, you were training, if you played a warrior. So like I played a warrior. So it was like, I got there, we filmed in Hungary first. So I got there a month before filming started and I went to train with uh, uh, Brett Chan and his amazing uh, stunt team. Um, they, uh, Brett went on to do like warrior and he, I think he's doing Kung Fu right now. And um, it's such an amazing crew. And basically you're trained as, you know, you know, everybody's like, I want to train like those 300 guys, you know, everybody's mm -hmm. always talking about it. You don't, it's awful. It's awful. It's so hard. Like 
that's what we basically had to do, right? It, like, I would not take away that experience from anything, but it is so much harder than anybody thinks. They look at it and they go, I would love to live that. And then you live it and you go, wow, this is so painful. Every day, every day we're not filming. You go to the stunt tent and you're training with all the stuntmen who are the top in the world and you've got to train with them. And I was like, I had to put on, you know, 15, 16 pounds of muscle. So it was like, I was eating a ton of food and then just, you know, I had different guys who were training me in lifting and then like wrestling, jujitsu, judo, um, kung fu, whatever, learning it all. And this is like seven, eight hours after I was done with that, gonna have to go to horseback riding. And that's like, it just this packed day of all sorts of training that at the end of the day, every day I'd have to go home and take a, a bath because um, my body was just in so much, it was so sore. It's like you're actually a part of the military while yeah. filming like a TV Yeah, series. yeah, it, it, you know, and it, the important thing is it's like as hard as it is, um, and, you know, as much complaining as I, as I might have done, it's, it's all for, you know, my safety. Because when you get to the, I mean, the, the episode nine, we have this huge battle. It's like, you're talking about 70, 80 uh, stunt guys, horses everywhere, fire. Nothing was, everything was practical, fire everywhere. Oh, God. So it was like, my fight was like uh, Claudia, Remy, and me. And you have to be prepared. Um, so it was like when all those elements are at, coming at you, you just, you're just kind of going through the motions, which is why we rehearsed that thousands of times before we actually shot it. And then, then you're not thinking about that stuff because you have, to you have to worry about all the other elements that are at play. Holy shit, that's all that's amazing. so fucking yeah. nuts. Wow. How much of, thank you. Uh, yeah, th thank you, Leonard. Like, yeah. How much of your ch Chinese opera uh, training went into uh, helped helped with this this part of filming um actually a lot um mm -hmm. it generally when it comes to um any kind of choreography i pick it up pretty quick mm -hmm. um so because i like so there's uh for those that don't know chinese opera has like two main elements right there's this there's the one that's like kind of a european counterpart where there's a lot of singing i wasn't great at the singing and i'm not gonna lie i wasn't very interested in it i was interested in more of the warrior roles which is what i played in in high school and so you're using weapons, you're doing choreography all, I was doing choreography all the time on the weekends. So when it comes to picking up choreography or imitating styles of martial arts, um, I never had too much problem. So I pick, I pick up choreo pretty, pretty quick, um, which came in handy big time for, for, for this show. Well, this is amazing because like, <laughs> like you are seriously a man who I feel like is, has, expressed a lot of interest in different things at a young age and has always just gone on to explore it and apply different aspects of it in your adult life as you continue to evolve as an artist. You know what I mean? But this Thank is the perfect you, yeah. segue mm -hmm. for us to go into our interview section where we get to know you a little bit more intimately. At least Roxy does because, <laughs> because Anthony knows you very well and I need to stop hitting on you. But, um, you know, your range of skills is so unique. I mean, um, you wanted to be like a comic book artist when you were a, a young kid, you're a martial artist. Chinese opera, this makes for a very one-of-a-kind resume. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm curious, it feels like from those aspects of yourself, you're somebody who isn't afraid, like when the pandemic comes that you're like locked up in a space. Like you, I feel like you're somebody who would be able to thrive in this sort of situation because you'll, you'll know what to expand on and how to use your time. Right. So did it give you more time with these other talents? Have you expanded beyond that? And, or has it always been incorporated into your daily life pre COVID? No, I think, I think one of the things it, for me, pre COVID, uh, COVID itself, this quarantine kind of ended up becoming kind of a reprieve. Cause I think um, as specifically as actors at the actors out there, we kind of, um, we're struggling just to get work in our day to day. We're just waiting and it builds mm -hmm. these neuroses and this paranoia that maybe you're not talented enough. Maybe your time is over. You get into your head and it's just a vicious cycle. And so in a way, um, the quarantine was a way for me to kind of get away from thinking about all those things. Cause we're all in the same boat and I didn't have to think about where I was on the pecking order, whether I was relevant anymore. And it, it kind of boiled everything down to an essence where I was, I've been literally just trying to survive because um, when you're not allowed to go outside and you have a toddler, it's like the most impossible situation because she needs to experience stimuli. She needs to do things. So it was like, how do I keep my kid entertained? She wakes up at five, 6 AM and then I have to entertain her. She takes like an hour nap and then I have to 7 PM, 8 PM. Finally, she'll go down. 
And that was like, that was so draining that, I mean, in the best way possible, I love my daughter, but <laughs> yeah. if there's, no, there's no creative element there. I'm just trying to survive. I'm just trying to survive the day. So by the time she went down, I had to think a lot about like, I, I, I produce, I write a lot, I, I read a lot, and I didn't want to do any of those things, right? So it almost became like, I just, I, you know, on Instagram, I follow tons of artists and I'm like, okay, I, I don't have the energy to write or read right now what are these guys doing? How are they doing it? And I'm like, okay, I, so I picked up art again. I, I dabbled in it about a year. I started getting like all the different, you know, pens and pencils, everything a year ago, but I didn't really focus on it until during quarantine. I was like, let's just try this. I, I don't have anything to do at night besides watch TV <laughs> with my wife or, or draw. So I just started drawing and I, I've um, really the past two, three months is the first time I picked it up in almost 25, 30 years. What? Yeah. Crazy, huh? Oh, revisiting a former flame. I love mm -hmm. that. Yeah, it's been great. It's been great. Um, and I've, I've seen, um, I, I can see, you know, people have been very complimentary and I'm like, I can see the improvement because mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm in a place where I'm, I can just kind of turn everything. For me, art, like any kind of art, whether it's when I do martial, martial arts or um, when I'm painting or drawing, no, I don't paint, that's a lie. Inking or drawing. <laughs> um, it's about trying to switch off. It's trying to like, you know, for me, it's about going back to a place, kind of going back to a source where I'm just, um, I'm not thinking too much. I'm not, I'm not, those human foibles of just, you know, I want to go back to my lizard brain in a way. Mm -hmm. like, go back to a place where I'm just, I just am, you know? Mm. I don't know what you call it, like the id or whatever. And so when I, I have a tennis, I used to do that with martial arts. You get to a place where, um, I, what I loved about doing Muay Thai before the quarantine was when you're so exhausted and you want to drop dead and you're forced to keep going, you just shut everything else out and you just move. Right. Mm -hmm. And there's a very, our society societies now, it's a very existential thing where it's like, I have food provided on my table. It's easy to get. I have, I'm not hunting, I'm not gathering. So now I have all this time to overthink everything, especially as an actor, mm -hmm. you know, so mm -hmm. I, and I know I tend to overthink and I can get very anxious. So for me, it's about how do I turn off that anxiety? And because I can't do Muay Thai right now, it was like, for me drawing, when I, when I, when I'm putting a pen to a piece of paper, I just go down this rabbit hole and my, 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 my mind clears and I disappear. And then two hours later, I come out of it and I kind of look, I'm like, okay, what did I, you know, it's a, it's a great way for me to kind of meditate. It's my meditation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. That was poetic. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I I used to draw a lot when I was a kid, and just going back to that time when you're a kid, you're no, there's no worries. It's just mm -hmm. you're using your imagination. Your imagination's just leading you. you yeah, know? And, yeah. That's what I mean by like going back to the source. So so mm -hmm. it's not necessarily going to be art for everybody, but it's like um, if your heart is pulling at you to try something, just do it. You know, like mm -hmm. what 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 does it cost you right now? Right. Like all of us are kind of again in the same boat there's not much we can do. Um, and I'm not saying it has to be something, uh, it doesn't have to be, like I said, it doesn't have to be drawing. It doesn't have to be creative. It could be, mm -hmm. it could be anything. It could be, you know, just sitting there and listening to music, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I had this compulsion recently to like, I want to dance. I'm like, I'm a terrible dancer and I, I like don't dance at all, but like something about, I, I just want to, I just want to move, you know? Um, so listen to your body and I think just kind of listen to it and go where it takes you. What were you listening to? <laughs> you know, I, well, you know, for me, it was the, um, uh, that, that song from, that we did uh, the, the Instagram, Olivia Chang posted that thing about the, you know, unapologetically Asian mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that music from, I'm forgetting, what's the movie called? Uh, uh, the Greatest Show, The Greatest Show, right? Mm -hmm. uh, with Hugh Jackman that music's just mm -hmm. great so I've been listening and it just it's something about it just gets me like the music that Olivia used for that that video uh, montage we did was fantastic and it just I must have listened to it a thousand times because it just it's a like we said it's a hard time and you want I think things have been so bleak and our tv shows and our movies love to be bleak and mm -hmm. I'm looking for things that inspire me I'm looking mm -hmm. for inspiration in any, any shape or form. That's one of the reasons I've been doing these IG live um, art sessions with different artists who aren't artists by trade necessarily, 
but they are kind of going back to their source as well. And I'm like, I love that. Now, why do you draw? What got you to draw? Because at the end of the day, it, again, it's not necessarily drawing, but as a kid, we had these compulsions to do this or that. It's like, how do we get back to that? Why are we doing that? And what does it bring out in you as an adult if you tap into it again? Mm -hmm. Totally. That's great, yeah. Totally, yeah. thank you. Um, so, sorry, Leonard, we, I was just so entrapped by, you know, everything you were saying. I like, mean, he yeah, is I'm magnetic like... and it's easy to get lost in his eyes. <laughs> so right. let's, let's backtrack a little bit. You were talking about, uh, uh, all, all your skills that you've, you developed through your childhood and just going back through your childhood to, to, uh, inspire creativity again and letting your, you know, that ignite your art and everything else. But, um, I'll, once you get into this industry called Hollywood, mm -hmm. right, they usually point at you and say, you are this, you're this Asian guy, right? Yeah. Um, I'm curious about this because, you know, obviously like our, our entry into Hollywood was either through martial arts or, you know, through what we look like right. and being one of those guys able to do Kung Fu. Right. And I wanted to ask, did Asianness ever attribute to your opportunities and what has your experience been like in your career specifically and how do you see it affect it? your Asian is affecting, you that's, know, it's landscape. a great, that's a great question. Um, so I, you know, on paper, you could say, Oh, this guy was a cliche of an Asian, right? I, I, I did try to, I studied martial arts, you know, and, and stuff like that. You could, you could argue that when I, in my twenties, um, you know, I, I came, I was so focused on like theater, you know, I, I had, I had, I was part of Randall Park's theater group at UCLA and we all, we were all, the majority of us were just like, we just want to act, right? It's not about, we don't want to, we want to tell our stories, but we don't want that to be the thing that identifies us in terms of stereotypes, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that kind of, my 20s was kind of defined by that. I did tons of theater all over LA um, in shitty little black box theaters where, you know, audience of two, you know, uh, uh, per five performers in audience of two. It was just like, you know, that, that was, that was what drove me. And, and I love doing that. I did a lot of Shakespeare for kids, just anywhere I could do it. And it had nothing to do with martial arts, even though I um, knew it, I mm -hmm. stopped basically doing it around junior year of college, senior year of college, really just focus on acting. I want like, I want to become the best actor I could possibly possibly be. And then as I got older, it was like, it was that thing of, you don't want to be put in a box in Hollywood, but one of the problems is if you're not in a box, you're, you're not going to know how to market yourself. They're not going to know what to do with you. Mm -hmm. And as I started to approach my thirties, I was like, I was trying to like, I was like, I don't know if I do comedy. I don't know if I'm a drama guy. I don't know what they see me as. And I kind of almost on a, on a whim, I, I started growing my hair out and my hair just got ridiculously long. And suddenly I was playing gangsters and, and, and villains and, and, and I, and, you know, I, again, it was like, you know, you could say it's stereotypical Asian gangsters or whatever, but I enjoyed doing the roles. They were three dimensional fleshed out main characters. So I, I enjoyed it a lot. And one thing led to another where, because I was kind of living in that world, stuff like Marco Polo came along or like Alita came along where it's actually very action heavy. And even though I hadn't done martial arts in so long, I found myself having to go back to the source and going back to, you know, um, what I used to do and kind of have pushed it aside. Mm -hmm. it almost, I don't want to say, maybe there was some part of me that was like embarrassment. Like, I don't want to be known as a martial arts guy, you know? That's, the, that's almost the problem with the conversation because we get upset about seeing martial artists on TV. Well, that's stereotypical, but I'm like, mm -hmm. martial arts is fucking cool. We love Bruce Lee, right? And and there's nothing wrong with doing work. The problem is, is that if that's all we're doing, right? Mm -hmm. Now, it's been a big part of my life. And suddenly it was, I got, I, it was almost in my 20s, I was pushing all that stuff away, pushing my Asianness away. And in my 30s, it started to come back to me. And they're like, nope, you got to embrace these things. And so after like Marco Polo, I started to really do Muay Thai a whole lot more. And I'm, I'm not great at it. But for me, like, again, all going back to the source, whether it's art, whether it's martial arts or whatever it may be, it was like, as I get older, I think we as humans are like, if I can't do this perfectly, I don't want to do it. And that is the enemy of self-improvement. Mm. That's the enemy of self-improvement. 
So I just want to be able to get up and do it every single day. If you do it every single day and you just practice, you get better no matter what. So I'm not, I'm not looking to become some Muay Thai champion. I'm not looking to become the best comic book artist or whatever. I'm just like, how can I self-improve through the mm -hmm. things that I'm interested in? I feel like that's just such a rite of passage in terms of like being an Asian or Asian American in the entertainment industry. You reject your Asian-ness first, then you realize you have to embrace your identity because it's such a big component of who you are and what you contribute to the overall big picture, right? Definitely. And then also like competition, us competing against each other, but like really just understanding the most important part of an artist is evolution mm -hmm. and growth, right? And not being afraid to try new things and experiment, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. 100%. I think as a creative, if you're not doing those things, you're, you're in trouble, right? Mm -hmm. And I think I was, I think we all fall into that. Um, so it's like, how do you, you know, you have to constantly seek inspiration and not every day is going to be easy. It's like you, so many actors, so many artists, you battle mental health issues, right? Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, you got to surround yourself with a good community of people that support you and that are rooting for you and then also kind of like what is it you can what is it you can do for yourself to kind of um seek out therapy i guess in a way mm -hmm. and again for me it's been it's been art because i can't really go out wow no that's awesome okay so we actually have to transition into mm -hmm. our next aspect now but the, leonard that was so so incredible and i can't wait for you to share more with us during your workshop because i feel like this is just like you know, we are just. I'm, uh, I'm not gonna lie. I might, I might have. I might have already blown it because I'm like. I think I just said everything. I might be. I might be repeating myself. No, 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 no. I think it's it's coming from the yeah. true place. And the way that you're speaking, it's clear you've been through so much because yeah. it comes out so naturally. So it's like all of this is is really gold. So please don't think like that. Like I think you have mm -hmm. so much more to give us later on. But um, we uh, guys, we're gonna take a little break right here. We'll be right back in a few after mm -hmm. a word from our sponsors. Who was our sponsor this week, Anthony? Uh, so this week's sponsor is a trendy new exercise for all of those encountering a creative block. Oh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. So here, uh, the, log the tagline is feeling stuck creatively. Try this new program where you can unblock your artistry while kicking some major ass. Hmm. Interesting. Let's take a look. Hit it. <clears throat> Having trouble unblocking your creativity? Afraid to walk on the streets alone because you're a weak human being who can't defend himself? Well, shut your mouth and say no more. Introducing martial art. The one and only program you can get your creative juices flowing whilst kicking some major ass. Created by Master Hamsaplo of the Shangxi province, he will guide you through a series of kicks and punches to lead you to create your very own masterpiece. Kick into some landscapes. Masterpiece. Strike into some portraits. Masterpiece. Vincent Van Gogh? More like Taekwondo. Pablo Picasso? More like Abla Picasso. Rembrandt? More like, remember when I totally knocked you out on the floor and you were in a coma for like two weeks? Here's a testimonial. Yeah, this was a complete waste of my time. Um, it is impossible to do those two things at the same time. I, I thought it was amusing at first, but then uh, I wasted so much money kicking through so many canvases, and I actually pulled my hamstring. Martial art is number one. I now kick ass and I paint good. I highly recommend it for all ages. Order martial art and become a black belt of the canvas. Visit our website or call today. Wow, martial. Mm. Martial art, who would have thought? Leonard, you seem to be a strong endorser of this program. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. So everybody, you could get 10% off your first month if you use the code SWN at checkout. The fee is a six month minimum at $599 per month. Guys, where do we get these types of sponsors? Look, I mean, we like, love our sponsors, okay? We love rocks, <laughs> we're under contract, we oh, love right. our sponsors. We, 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 we get sorry. money from them. Oh, oh, yeah. Thank oh, you, okay. sponsors, martial arts. And 
So <clears throat> we don't get on money from, from them. <laughs> it's just a shape. A shape. Just opening the curtain, letting everyone see, huh? Okay. <laughs> now, the moment that you've all been waiting for, Leonard is going to do our workshop time. Hit the bumper. Bumper. We're back. We're okay. very excited. Good. Oh my gosh! So I don't even know. Like I like I said, um, I I I kind of talked a lot about the things that I should have saved for now. <laughs> um, but um, so I do. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll use that as, as an example. So I had mentioned that like uh, two weeks ago, I did an uh, Instagram live thing with uh, Brandon Brandon Suhu. Mm -hmm. And what I love about, uh, he's a fantastic actor and um, fantastic artist. And he does things, what I, what I seek out in trying to um, explore other people's art is I'm seeking inspiration. And I think this can translate to basically, you know, essentially anything you do, it's like, how do you broaden your horizon? So for me, it's like comic book stuff. I'm very, you know, I'm like, okay, I'll, you know, X-Men and Spider-Man. Now, Brandon is like, he's, he's, you know, he loves Dr. Seuss um he, he loves really queer quirky things so i'm like his art is about amalgamations of different creatures or whatever and i'm like it, it's fantastic because i i have i don't have the i have the ability to lay out and, and draw technically sound wise but i don't have the imagination so how do i nurture it through other people brandon's like let's do let's do a fusion of different animals so we decided on the ig live that we do you know a, a turtle octopus I'm like, I would, I would, I'm like, I'm never, I would never think of doing that because that's just not me. I'm like, great. And his turned out fantastic and cute and, and like PG. Mine was like something out of a comic book again. But this is, this is what I ended up doing for my- uh, What? My, my turtle- It's uh, like a no, Godzilla uh, monster. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it, I started drawing it and then everybody was like, it looks like kaiju. I'm like, all right, it's a kaiju. I'm making it a kaiju. So That's yeah. crazy. Um, thank you. Um, that's amazing yeah. wow. thank you so so you know um for me like when i draw how do i translate to this to other things when people go where do you start like how do you even begin with something like that well you have to have a big layout but for me it's just i literally just take a pen and it's not about just like i was talking about with martial arts it's not about the end goal i don't know where the end goal is going to be I'm not worried about the end goal. Um, if I start to get impatient with my art, I, I stop and I'll take a break, right? Because mm -hmm. literally, I'm literally, I don't know if you guys can see, but I'm just, it's line, 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 and then it's just denser where I want the shadows. I'm just doing lines. There's no black blocks. I'm not, it's just, I'm literally just hash, hash, wow. hash, 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 hashing away. Line, wow. line, 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 line. And as I do that, um, I kind of go somewhere else. I go into the zone mm -hmm. um, and I feel like that's a place that we don't seek out enough. And again, everybody's approach to it may be different, but I think some sort of uh, form of meditation, especially now with all the stress and anxiety that's out there, I think whatever it is you can, you can do for yourself, whether it is meditation itself, um, like I said before, whether it's listening to music, um, you know, uh, for, for before the quarantine, it was exercise for me, right? Going to the gym or whatever. But people, I think when we talk about being creative, we're always talking about what it is um, we have to do in terms of activating our brain. And, and it's not that this is a passive form of using your brain, but try to fall into a pattern where it's like, you're not, you're not thinking, you're not thinking, you're just turning it off. And if you, if you turn off your brain um, in that way where you just, for me, it's like that repetition, that repetition, that repetition. I have no idea where I'm going with this. I don't know what it's going to look like. I'm not worried about the end result. And then when you pull away from it, you go, oh, damn, that was, that's, that's pretty good. That's not what I was expecting at all. Um, don't place judgment on what you create. Just, just do it. Mm -hmm. And um, don't, don't hold your art sacred. Don't hold what you create sacred. Um, be, be, be willing to throw it away, trash it, because you can do it over and over again. It, it, that's, the, that's the beautiful thing about creating art. It's like 
nobody is stopping you, but it's such an existential thing. Nobody's going to stop you, but yourself. Right. Mm -hmm. And those are all your mental blocks that are there. Um, that's, you know, one, one of the reasons I, I love working with writers so much as a producer is because I think we as actors, because acting is considered such a subjective thing, you'll find a lot of actors don't necessarily, I'm not saying all, but a lot of actors don't work where they should. They don't know how to emphasize what it is that they can focus on and to improve. Whereas with writers, it's like you write and you write and you write and you write in the coffee shop, you write at home, you find different places, sacred spots, sacred spots to create. And they just keep writing. And it's, um, I, I was listening, I was watching your, your, you know, um, um, your interview with Randall and Randall, you know, uh, you know, he said that he's of the belief that, you know, anybody can act. And, um, and, and his wife, Jay had said that um, she believes that it's innate. And I think it's a little bit of both. I think what it is, is that the innate gift is that you love this so much that you're willing to do it 50,000 times. If you're not willing to do it 50,000 times, then you don't have the gift for it. Now, what Randall said about it, like just doing it over and over again, I agree 100%. You do it over and over and over again and you'll get it. It's the gift to have the, the, the desire to do it mm -hmm. 10, 10 50,000 times. That's, that's, that's the gift, right? Because oh, there's going to be a good deal of people that are like, I'm not interested in acting, right? I, I don't want to have to go to 10,000 hours of classes. Well, then, then, then you don't have the gift, right? Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. Yeah. I think you sort of answered this in your explanation, Leonard, but you know how you were saying, I let myself go. I mean, meditation is already such a hard thing to just be in the zone, be present with something because nowadays mm -hmm. we're so easily distracted by a message or you know, people around us, all of that. And you say, oh, if you feel frustrated, walk away and come mm -hmm. back later. But you know, mm -hmm. there are so many artists and emerging artists who have difficulty finishing something. Like yes, they may start a million things and never finish things. Like, how do you unblock that? Like, has that ever happened to you? One, no, I'm, I'm the king of not finishing. I get 70, 80%. Like I'll write screenplays and I'll get to like page 70 and I'm like, shit, I painted myself in the corner. Just like, <laughs> I'm like, I don't know what to do with this and I'll, I'll toss it. I have so many unfinished scripts. Um, so one of the things that I have learned over time is, um, as I've gotten to, and I'm not a great writer, but having worked with so many amazing writers, I've, I've learned from them. It's like, one of the things is execution of the game plan is huge. It's also the same, you know, when I, when I draw, like I, I showed you guys, I, yesterday I did a live IG where I was like the, the, they voted on do, drawing, um, Mulan and, and stitch. And so I was like, okay, I have this idea. So this is, this is the same thing as, as, as for my, for, for writers, for anything you're creating, right? Have a bigger, it's, it's outside in. So I was like, I, wanna, I want to have Mulan kind of like she's posing, she's getting ready to fight. I want to have Mushu in there, but Mushu's going to be like a real dragon and Stitch is going to be like armored up like the other characters from the cartoon, you know, Mulan animation. And there's going to be just like getting ready to battle a bunch of guys, right? Like just, so, so for me, it was like, I'm always outlining, like I, I have like, okay, this is, I'm gonna have Stitch here. And then before I set it to pen, I'll be like, um, this is what I wanna encapsulate. And then as soon as I'm happy with where it is, I'll start to go to ink. It's, you can talk, you, this is in a way, this, it's, it's very similar in terms of writing a script, right? Or anything. There's a certain point where it's like, if you don't have it mapped out and you're like 30% in, you're gonna screw yourself over because it's gonna start falling apart. It's literally the same thing when I screenwrite or when I'm doing inks, what will happen, I'm, I'm calling myself on a weakness here, right? Is if you start to see like things kind of get shaky, it's because I've just gone straight to ink without having the, the proper, mm. proper plan and pace. If mm. you, can, you can see it in my art, you know? And I'm good, I've gotten good enough where I can hide it. But I think with the, that you'll find that with a lot of artists where they don't have a game plan in terms of what they think they, you know, what it is they want to do and they haven't penciled it and, and had a good, good enough um, image of it in their mind, you'll see it in their work. So have a process. Like, you know, I think, I, I think you were talking about like, oh, letting yourself free flow, but that's part of the 10,000 hours it takes to like build yes. that process that yes. works for you, yes. right? Yeah. yeah, so for sure. I mean, but it doesn't even, so like I told you guys, I haven't done art in 
I started picking up after 25, 30 years. For me, it was like I had such a hard time drawing women. Now I did a, a IG live with Chris Pang where it was like Wonder Woman. I was like, fuck. I'm like, Wonder Woman, I can end. So I was like, so before we did the IG lab, I was practicing drawing women, drawing women, drawing women, right? And this was about a month ago. So when I started drawing Mulan, I had no problem. I was like, okay, I understand female anatomy way better. I know what pose I want. Um, it, just kind of, it just kind of flowed, right? But you, it's like you said, it's a process where you have to do 10,000 hours. And I'm not saying like you won't, it's not you'll see improvement after 10,000 hours. You'll see the improvement during those 10,000 hours, but you mm -hmm. got to put them in in order to have the ability to let things go. And I think there's a beautiful space in that too, is, you know, my stuff is finely detailed or whatever, but I, I think there's an, like economy is also a form of art as well. Knowing when to uh, be detailed and when to kind of pull back on the art. Um, I'm the big, I, I did an IG live with Yumi Sakagawa, whose art is fantastic and she's a great writer. Um, she, you know, she wrote the uh, book, um, I think I'm in uh, friend love with you, right? And her art is, is quote unquote simplistic, but it's not something I could ever create. So it's how do you get to that economy? How do you get to that place where it's very um, surreal and interpretive? Um, it's all the same process. Wow. That's really great. That actually gave, gives me a lot of food for thought too. It's like without you really know, I mean, at first I think it's about being very expressive and allowing yourself to be free and not being so hard on yourself mm -hmm. and then recognizing these certain aspects of your own practice that make you so much better, so much quicker. So and like it becomes intuitive, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also knowing, you know, we're saying, <laughs> we keep, keep talking about like kind of saying owning the Asian-ness. It's also just owning, what is it I'm good at? What is it I love? There's nothing wrong with leaning into that. And maybe down the line, you can explore other things, but lean into where your, your strengths lie, mm -hmm. get really good at that, and then let everything else go, right? I mean, um, I'm always, I always think about Bruce Lee's quote, you know, he's always like, be formless, right? Um, he, he, by the end of his, like, um, by, by, the, by the height of his martial arts career, he was telling people, don't adopt to any one system, um, you know, but, but, I, I don't disagree with that, but I think one of the things is you have to master to understand how to throw away. I have a question. Sorry, I keep asking all the questions here, Anthony. Okay, so uh, uh, Leonard, I just want to ask uh, in terms of like, you know, being an Asian American artist, like, um, you know, I don't know what your childhood was like growing up or what kind of family culture you had, but, you know, I think Asians, we, we just have this thing where we're taught a certain system of rules growing mm -hmm. up and, and like a certain way of thinking, a certain way of like utilizing our efforts, our practice, our attention. And like artistry is very counterintuitive to that because sure. you have to let yourself be open to things and like right. explore your own path. What was that like for you? And if there was obstacles, how did you move past that? Um, I think... I think um, my parents are very, very supportive and, and very proud of me um, now. Who wouldn't be? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It, it took time. I think the, the big thing about it was when I grew up, when I was growing up in DC, aside from saying doing Chinese opera, I didn't really demonstrate any interest in becoming an actor. So when I suddenly went to UCLA and like professed to them that I was going to be doing this, they're like, where the hell did this come from? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I think a lot of it was certainly knowing that my parents wouldn't support me, but also kind of, it's that thing of, this sounds terrible, but I was like, you know, everybody's compartmentalized in high school. And I was like, I don't want to be the theater geek. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I don't want to be categorized as that. Like I just had too much ego about that. Right. I wanted to, and you can't really travel between groups in high school. There's some people that can do it, but in general, I was too, cognizant of the pecking order of things to be brave enough to be like i want to be an actor and it was almost like i had to shed my skin by leaving my state <laughs> leaving the coast and starting all over where nobody knew me you know mm. um and i'm not saying of course that's like not an answer for for, for everybody mm -hmm. but um I, I think i think if it's in you if you love it enough you know you it'll find you it's just like the calling for me was so strong to be an artist, um, you know, like you had mentioned earlier, it's like before I wanted to become a, an actor, 
um, I had dabbled with the idea of being a comic book artist and my parents way of, my parents were very supportive, but they didn't always know the best way to support me. So they're like, Oh, he likes comic book art. We'll put him in a fine arts class where he draws flowers on a Friday night. <laughs> so, you know, and I'm like, okay. And that's actually what made me stop drawing. Mm -hmm. Cause I was like, fuck this. This is like, I hate this. You know, mm -hmm. I've learned as an adult, I can appreciate it. But at the, as a kid, nine, 10 years old, this is terrible. This is the worst thing you could do to a kid on Friday night. Um, but I'm back to it. I'm drawing. I mean, it took me a long time, but I'm back to doing it. So it's like, if it's, if it's in you, um, I'm also one for self-help books like Alchemist or whatever, right? It's like, if you're hearing the signs and the universe is telling you to explore it, explore it, you know, see where it takes you and don't worry about what the final outcome, the people we are so Western civilization is so focused on outcome. We're so focused on outcome. I'm guilty of it. I'm always like, I'm always like, Oh, I should have, I should have accomplished this and that. And then Steph, my wife will be like, yeah, but look at what 18 year old Leonard would, if he saw what you've done, he'd be like, holy shit, how did you get here? Wow. It's just that you're, you're so, we're so busy just grinding away, grinding away that we don't, we never take a you know, step back to realize what we have accomplished mm -hmm. and not just in what we consider our occupation. It's also like, in how we build our community, you know, how we, um, the people that surround us, right? Um, one of the reasons I've been lucky enough to be, you know, starting out a pretty successful producer is because of the struggles of being an actor. All that downtime, I had nothing to do. Turns out it was like, hey, I'm really good at story and people keep coming to me for questions and wanting my help on producing. So I'm like, you know, it, it just, it, things work out not in the way you expect, but they work out if you keep at it. And Leonard was like saying, I don't know if I have anything else to give. <laughs> it's all we have. Look yeah. at, no, look at this <laughs> endless fountain of knowledge that you keep giving us. I mean, that was, exactly. I think that was so incredible. But I do, we do have to wrap this course, portion yeah. up. So Anthony, are yeah. you ready for final thoughts? I am ready for final thoughts. You ready for the bumper check? Hit it! <laughs> All right, so, sorry for pointing. Sorry for pointing at you guys. <laughs> All uh, right. Here's our final thoughts, Rox. What? Uh, who want, who want, do you want to go first? Or I'll, go, I'll go first. Okay, go what are my it, final thoughts on the show today with the amazing Leonard Wu? Oh my God, I don't, there was so much, I mean, he, I feel like all of our guests are like incredible TED talkers that should be paid mm -hmm. like a hundred thousand yeah. dollars with all the knowledge that they're, that, you know, they're sharing with us. But with Leonard specifically, this thing keeps coming to my head about being present. Mm -hmm. And um, we focus so much on our past and so much on our future. And I think it's important that like, whatever it is right now, the space you're in right now, whatever it is that you're doing right now, be completely focused on it, be present with it and then let the future unfold as it would. Cause we do have this very anxious, even, even, you know, he was talking about like, I mean, Leonard, you were talking about like, um, walking away from something and then coming back later. I started painting all these paint by numbers. They're paint by numbers. They're not real paintings, but um, you know, I remember I would, I would be like, okay, this is a way for me to relax. Like I bought it so that I could relax and pass time during quarantine. And I realized once I started painting and I, I'm sure this is just in my nature as well. I'm like, how come this isn't unveiling itself fast enough? Mm -hmm. Like, why is it, it? I mean, this is actually taking a lot longer than I thought. You know, but there's all these like negative thoughts that start to come in mm -hmm. afterwards. But for me, the overall lesson that I took from his conversation and his workshop today was just about like, don't be too hard on yourself. Don't expect too much from yourself. Because if you look back, you already went a hundred times further than you ever thought you could. You just have to allow yourself those opportunities and chances to grow. And so that is mine. Anthony, what are yours? Great Boom. thoughts. Thank you. Uh, so Leonard and I share a lot of similarities as far as our journey of actors. Uh, as an actor um, and an artist, I know I went to art class when I was a, a, a younger and I used to just draw cartoons, Garfield, Sonic, what have you. And then my mom, being an Asian mother, put me to this Asian fine arts class. And then they were like, draw this vase and shadow it in. And then I drew a vase with 
you know, eyes and a, and a tongue sticking out of it. <laughs> you know, that, was, that was me. And then that is you. I was judged for it. The teacher judged me for it. And from there, I was like, okay, I'm not going to do it anymore. You know, um, but I just, and also, also another similarity is when I got into acting, I, 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 I'm a black belt in Taekwondo. Not many people know that. So Oh my god, I did Taekwondo too. I mean, I know this is like your moment, but I also want to share exactly that right. I did Taekwondo. Then you, okay, I'm going to need to see some kicks later on, okay? You, you know. want to do a tornado kick? I can't do this anymore. My boobs have hit my face. But, you know, I'm no. a different person. I just want to say that I've also done it, Anthony, and it's I could probably be better than you. It's yeah, competition. sure. Let's spar. Just Let's kidding. Spar okay. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I, I took that off my resume during my first five years of, of, of acting because I didn't want to be cornered into that at all. But now coming back to it, I want to embrace those things. I want to, I want to go back to those times when, you know, I didn't worry about what the outcome was. Or I didn't have reservations. I just did it, you know, mm -hmm. and practicing did make me better in drawing. Practicing did make me better in, in my martial arts and also being on stage more and more and more gives you this sort of like freedom and uh, no think twiceness, you know, you let go of your brain kind of like feeling yeah. once you're in it, you're in that sort of like, like you said, that zone. So mm -hmm. reservations, outcomes, everything is just eliminated and you're there. So if I feel like, like you said, it's like sort of like the Mamba mentality. You just do it every day. Yeah. You don't know where it's going to go and you don't have to know where it goes but you do it every day and you're going to master your own ability you know so yeah those are those are my final thoughts you guys Leonard, we're definitely not leaving you out of this yeah i mean what are your final thoughts on on whatever you want to share i mean any words of wisdom from emerging no, I, artists i mean i think you guys you know you guys really nailed it is like be be kind to yourself mm -hmm. don't worry about the outcome like you know, what is that? I'm going to butcher that saying. It's like the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we were so worried about, okay, well, a thousand miles is far away. I'm not even going to take that first step. Take the first step and then the second step. And before you know it, you're way further than you imagined. Like, because you're not focused on that end, that end goal. There you go. A hundred thousand dollars for Leonard Wu's TED Talk. Yes, please thank Dosekis, you. Please, 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 Dosekis, please sponsor us. We're the most interesting man in the world in our show today. Okay, so that's it for now. Thank you, Mr. Leonard Wu. You've been thank awesome. You. So this uh, show was specifically created for Asian Pacific American Heritage Month in collaboration with LA uh, Asian Pacific Film Festival for their uh, virtual showcase. So Roxy, our producer Jack and I wanted to create a show that would help our community unblock creativity and inspire our creatives and, and unite our creatives as well. And we hope we did that in some kind of way with the help of our amazing guests. And we're pretty sad to say that this virtual showcase is coming to its end and it's been a hell of a ride. And we've been just very grateful for all the support that we've gathered here from our viewers, friends, and, and just guests alike. It's starting to get emotional, Ross. Are you going to cry? Can you cry on Cuba? No, I'm not going to cry. Cry, 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 No, cry, no, cry. no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> So unfortunately, y'all, that means we'll be having our season finale. We say season because we don't know if the second wave of the, of the virus will come back and we're forced to have another quarantine show. But so it's for now. Okay, so uh, our next, our season finale is next Saturday, June 6th. Make sure you tune in on Facebook Live and or YouTube at 2 p.m. PST. Don't miss it. We'll be making our guest announcement during the week. Yes, and make sure to find that announcement by following us on Facebook at So What Now Show or on Instagram at So What Now underscore show. This trendly looking excessive know-it-all is signing off. And this handsome-er, eh, Tony Leung, is waving goodbye to you. <laughs> right, Thank you so much, Leonard. Let's Thank all say guys. goodbye. Yeah, goodbye. Bye. 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 Roll credits. Mm -hmm. Ew, gross. <laughs> <laughs> oh, another round of books hits my skin.